The Festus disc is a disc of fired clay from the island of Crete, possibly from the middle or late Mono and Bronze Age second millennium BC, bearing a text in an unknown script and language. Its purpose and its original place of manufacture remain disputed. It is now on display at the Archaeological Museum of Heraclion. The disc was discovered in 1908 by the Italian archaeologist Luigi Pugno during the excavation of the Manon Palace of Pestus. The disc is about 15 centimeters in diameter and is covered on each side with a spiral text, consisting of a total of 241 occurrences of 45 distinct signs which were created by pressing individual sign stamps onto the soft clay before firing. By its unique features, it initially led some scholars to suspect a forgery or hoax. The disc is not generally accepted as authentic by archaeologists. This mysterious object captured the imagination of amateur and professional paleographers, and many attempts have been made to decipher the code behind the disc signs. While it is not clear that it is a script, most attempted disaffirmants assume that it is. Most additionally assume a syllabary, others an alphabet or logography. The Pestus disc was discovered in the Manon Palace site of Pestus, near Hagiotrida, on the south coast of Crete. Specifically, the disc was found in the basement of Room 8 in Building 10, one of a group of buildings to the northeast of the main palace. This grouping of rooms also served as a formal entry into the palace complex. The disc was found in the main cell of an underground temple depository. These basement cells, only accessible from above, were neatly covered with a layer of fine plaster. Their content was poor in precious artifacts, but rich in black earth and ashes mixed with burnt bovine bones. In the northern part of the main cell, in the same black layer, a few centimetres southeast of the disc and about 50 centimetres above the floor, the site apparently collapsed as a result of an earthquake, possibly linked with the eruption of the Santorini volcano that affected large parts of the Mediterranean region during the mid-second millennium BC. The disc is made of fine-grained clay. Some authors have stated that the clay does not appear to be of local origin, perhaps not even from Crete. It was intentionally and properly fired, unlike tablets and seals that were baked only accidentally. The disc is approximately cylindrical, about 16 centimeters in diameter and almost a centimeter thick, with rounded edges. More precisely, the outline is slightly egg-shaped, with the diameter varying from 15.8 to 16.5 centimeters and the thickness from 1.6 to 0.1 centimeters. The disc is slightly concave on side A and convex on side B. The most remarkable feature of the Pestus disc is that the embossed signs that comprise its inscription all result from pressing separate stamps, one for each symbol, into the soft clay before firing. Thus the disc can be seen as an early example of movable type printing. Typesetter and linguist Herbert Brecker writes, if the disc is, as assumed, a textual representation. We are really dealing with a printed text, which fulfills all definitional criteria of the typographic principle. The spiral sequencing of the graphematical units, the fact that they're impressed in a clay disc blind printing, and not imprinted on merely possible technological variants of textual representation. The decisive factor is that the material types are proven to be repeatedly instantiated on the clay disc. A medieval example of a similar blind printing technique is the proofing dedicatory inscription. Popular science author Jared Diamond describes the disc as an example of a technological innovation that did not become widespread because it was made at the wrong time in history. Diamond contrasts the process with Gutenberg's printing press. Besides the stamped symbols, there are a few markings made by scoring the moist clay with a sharp stylus. On each side there is a continuous spiral line that separates successive burns of the text. The script between successive spies of this line is divided into sections by short radial lines, so that each section contains a few more signs. The presumed start of the text, adjacent to the edge, is also marked by such a radial stroke 
with the addition of five dots punched along it with a silus. Finally, under some of the sand signs, there are sure oblique strokes if the disc is, as assumed, a textual representation. We are really dealing with a printed text, which fulfills all definitional criteria of the typographic principle. The spiral sequencing of the graphematical units, the fact that they're impressed in a clay disc blind printing, and not in printed are merely possible technological variants of textual representation. The decisive factor is that the material types are proven to be repeatedly instantiated on the clay disc. A medieval example of a similar blind printing technique is the proofing dedicatory inscription. Popular science author Jared Diamond describes the disc as an example of a technological innovation that did not become widespread because it was made at the wrong time in history. Diamond contrasts the process with Gutenberg's printing press. Besides the stamped symbols, there are a few markings made by scoring the moist clay with a sharp stylus. On each side there is a continuous spiral line that separates successive burns of the text. The script between successive spies of this line is divided into sections by short radial lines, so that each section contains a few more signs. The presumed start of the text, adjacent to the edge, is also marked by such a radial stroke, with the addition of five dots punched along it with a silus. Finally, under some of the sand signs, there are sure oblique strokes.